I'm Tracy Burrell. I'm the Director of Education in the Durham Catholic District School Board. Here in our board, we are trying to inspire a conversation about the ways in which we are called to serve. And so today, I am talking to Tish Shepherd, who is the Faith Formation Coordinator for our board. Hi Tish, how are you today? Hi Tracy, great, thanks. Um, Tish, I was wondering if you could share with us um, how you particularly were called to serve in the role of Faith Formation Coordinator. I think when the question was initially asked, I, I, really, um, had to, I really had to think about discernment. I had to discern what, whether I should be in this role or not, whether it was a fitting role at this point in time in my life. Um, and when I go to the discernment piece, I always go back to my own formation. Uh, in my faith and so I thought way back to my childhood days of those people that would have been critical in forming my faith like my parents my father always used to say the family that prays together stays together and we used to giggle about that as a family but you know there's a lot of truth to that um, but then I had really really good memories and vivid memories about being at mass as a, as a young child our whole Gallagher family taking up an entire pew all ten of us but then at the end of the day at the end of the mass we'd go downstairs to the basement because my mom was also the president of the Catholic Women's League mm -hmm. and so we'd be down there and we'd be getting ready for something that was going to be happening whether it was a penny drive or something like that um, and then I, I have memories of certainly uh, as, a, as a grade 8 student we kind of conjured up a whole bunch, grabbed a whole bunch of our grade eight friends and we said, let's walk to mass every day in Lent. And so we did this little pilgrimage every single day of Lent, oh, yeah. this group of, of students. Um, and, and we also had uh, at our church when I was growing up, Father Love and Father Breen were our, our parish priests. Um, and they really, to us, they, they were not just people at the church. They would show up in our playground at recess and they'd be out there while we were you know playing at recess and the priests were there and so that really kind of formed for me what what my notion of the church was and the church isn't just a building with a place and a time for an hour of, of you know of being at mass but it's also the sense of being in community and so that really really I think helped me when I was going through this discernment process because I wondered fairly deeply about do I have the knowledge that I need to have in order to to actually do this role, to, to live it out. Uh, and and it reminded me of, of, you know, Jesus looking at the disciples and he didn't say, look, I'm looking for perfection. He said, I'm looking for people who will be humble and who will, you know, move with the spirit as, as it needs to be. And so that really, I feel like that, you know, accompanied certainly with some soul searching and questions and encouragement from my husband Paul, from, you know, family and friends and colleagues kind of that really said to me, this is a call to serve. This is your call to serve. And so I, I embraced it and I'm, I'm really glad. And since being in the role, actually, I've actually had such great um, learning from others. And so uh, the, our chaplaincy team here at the board has, every time I engage with them, I learn something about being grateful and something about being humble, right? And something about service. So. Tish, you've given years of service to the board in, in a variety of capacities as a teacher, um, as, a, as a consultant. Um, we're in the Lenten season right now in our system. Um, how do you see in this new role as faith coordinator, how do you see that you are able to uh, impact students and staff? Well, Lent is a time of reflection, and so as a faith formation coordinator, I think it's an opportunity for me to draw people back to the purpose of Lent and the true meaning of it. And my hope and goal is that my efforts will deepen their faith. Um, throughout Lent, I've been providing you know time for prayer and reflection, and hopefully that that helps them understand that Easter story. Uh, we have weekly prayer services right here in St. Francis of Assisi Chapel, and I'm extremely intentional about how I curate these these services for them so that there are things that are not coming in and just saying some rote prayer and then leaving but things that mean things deeply to the people that are here that reach out to some somewhere in their own hearts and their minds and lets them have time for reflection so that they have this sense of you know uh, what the Easter story is it's definitely allowed me to support the entire Durham Catholic District School Board community and like beyond even beyond Lent I've worked closely with our DC pick, for example, who have done put together a beautiful well-being uh, day for parents. Um, and so the thing that I'd like to sort of remind you is that, um, you know, you asked me what, how I've impacted. I've been impacted greatly by working alongside people like DC pick 
like our students when we put together the Student Summit for Hope, uh, where students articulated so eloquently uh, through, through service projects, things that are saying, I want to protect the environment. So they're looking at Pope Francis's Laudate Si and they're saying, we are going to do things to support that. And so, yes, I impact people, but I also honor the fact that they impact me, that it's a two-way street, this faith formation thing that we call here. So, Tish, it's apparent that in your role as Faith Formation Coordinator, you have been able to make an impact um, across the system. Um, if you are talking to someone who is thinking about um, a leadership role or serving in some kind of leadership capacity, what would be your message or um, advice to them? Um, well, I would say that four words would come to my mind, right? The idea of discernment, mm -hmm. uh, compassion, relationship and hope um, and first time, taking time to discern as I did to sort of say what is my story what's my faith story and you know think through is is this my call to serve at this time so okay. taking that time also taking time to consider that we are in challenging times uh, and remember that we're called to respond to these times and situations always with care and concern and compassion and integrity and dignity. Uh, so Catholic leadership has to be rooted in compassion. Further to that, I would say that whatever the Catholic leadership role that you're considering, that you really need to know who is that community that I'm going to be leading. Right, uh, so uh, the way you do this obviously is spending time with them, listening deeply to them, uh, connecting personally with them and understanding their story. And I think if we get to the last one, and I put this last, but I do think it's, it's critical and probably upfront, as I would encourage them to approach this role with a hope-filled attitude, right, being hopeful. Uh, hope really helps people press on together when, you know, otherwise, you know, you'd feel strains of the world, right, press on and really, really start to believe in each other. Um, and we have incredibly talented staff and students in our board. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and we have supportive families and we have a willing church. Mm -hmm. So I think if, if, you, if you realize that you're not in this alone, even though you're the leader, you're not in this alone, you'll do that job well. Um, and so once you've discerned and you've, you have this feeling that you're drawn to call to serve, then step into the role wholeheartedly. It's good to hear all of that. I was thinking as you were talking that, um, you know, in terms of that calling to serve, um, it's good that we're all called in different ways because we have so many uh, roles in our system uh, that need to be filled and um, each person's pathway is different so that whole process of discernment that you talked about and, and compassion are important and I think it's also important to be compassionate with ourselves um, in terms of uh, really being kind and gentle. You had to be compassionate with yourself too to actually recognize um, all the gifts that you have and we're so happy that you did because you've been able to share them in so many ways. Thanks.